So our lead-off talk here in Ritchie this morning is one that was inspiring to the uh, to the committee. I was part of that committee that was looking at the uh, submissions of talks, and um, I hope is also going to be inspiring uh, to you. We have uh, two young hackers, not aspiring hackers, but fully qualified, certified, and now you're at hope. This is it, right? This, you're authorized. At this point. <laughs> Exactly. So uh, they're, they're going to tell you all about their inspiration and hopefully, uh, hopefully give you some ideas about um, uh, about inspiring yourself. Welcome. Thank you for that introduction. Hello, I uh, to be a Scilab inspiring the next next generation of hackers. Woo! Lights run by our, uh, an Arduino. 
And another great one is adamfruit.com. Like, that's like the best one, in my opinion. The Adam uh, Fruit website, it has projects, tutorials, and step-on-step -step instructions and videos and all you need. And it even lists all the parts you need for that one project. So it has like everything there. which is like the next step in programming. There are tons of online resources. Again, internet people couldn't survive without it. And they have many projects you can do. And here, you see that little badge thing right there? It's actually also, ta-da, right here. Do you see it? See that little blinking thing? That's an LED matrix badge. The LED matrix badge, like this one, it has blinking heart, blinking heart, then it says Bia on it. It's really cool. And another thing I made with, with an Arduino, ta-da! The light up headband. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I made it with NeoPixel LEDs. And now to Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is so huge, it could be a, a talk by itself, which I should actually do a talk on it, yeah. Okay. So it's a full-on computer, and it can, and it runs Linux. It is so cool, it, and it's only $70 for a full kind of setup. And the rest, they even have a website. The Raspberry Pi website teaches you how to code. It has projects. It's super cool. And in, uh, see that book, Learn to Program with Minecraft? There's even a book where you program, and then instead of building a whole entire house, which may even take days and days and days in Minecraft, snap, 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 it's just there in a flash after just a few lines of code. And over here, you see that picture of that man? Well, they even have something where you can take a picture of yourself and it converts it into actual Minecraft blocks and makes a giant version of you, which is actually awesome. And it can all uh, and it can run Kali Linux. Speaking of Kali Linux, <laughs> Oh, 
picking. It's a very, very fun and valuable skill. Like if you get into jail. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, you're at your work, and your boss says, I want these files, and I want them now, or else you're fired. You know how bosses are always so bossy. And, oh no, you forgot the key to your filing cabinet. Da da da! Lockpicks! Dicky dicky dick! Here's the file! Now I'm not fired! <laughs> CTFs in crypto challenges. CTFs are everywhere. CTFs are so much fun, especially with people. You should always set a goal for one flag at least, and then the rest is gonna be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And you should really join a friend or someone you don't even know. Like, go up to a person and say, hey, I don't know you, you seem to be working on this. Wanna work together? So you guys can learn from each other and it's all happy and Care Bears and Dora and Rainbows <laughs> and Blood. And crypto challenges are awesome. Like, this crypto challenge, it's actually a choose your own adventure book. It was super cool. So hacker cons are great, but bank cons are greater. I know that man. <laughs> it's demon. Yeah. I, know, I saw him at DEF CON too. A big one is DEF CON, DEF CON, DEF CON, DEF CON, DEF CON has a roots asylum, which is just for kids. They have many cool things and talks and everything. They have drones and SECTFs and all different things. And cons have a lot of training classes too if you want to learn more about anything. And hope is another great one. You guys should really Ooh. go to hope. You, have, you really have to go, you know? If you haven't been there, it's very exciting. <laughs> and speaking of hope, at Hope 11, I'm, I met Sebastian. He's a biologist and a biohacker. He guided me on researching Oxalis tricta, which is a plant. And over here in this picture, the one where he's with me actually, we were cloning a tobacco plant, but not from the seed, definitely not from the seed, from the plant. We cut up the plant, chip and chop chip, and then with the leaf, it grew from the leaf, people. It's like, <laughs> bam, mind-blowing science. Media, which is a group of five chemicals, and I varied the amount of ammonium nitrate to the um, to oxalstricta, and I saw that the less the better. And I used a Raspberry Pi to control the experiment. Again, Raspberry Pi, you need it. Like, get one, people. Play around with it. And I built a relay controlled outlet to control the light, so it turn on the lights, and it had a time lapse camera, so it take a picture. Send it to be a bio lab, different from be a sci lab. That's my, where I do all my science stuff. Turn off the lights and send it to Twitter. And I did it all with Python. Python is great, people. And that led to my sixth grade science fair. It was really, really a big pain giving a specific amount to each and every plant. <sighs> Science is so hard, especially when you have to water stuff with chemicals. <laughs> and so I made the water bot. The water bot would measure the amount of water, dispense, then print out the amount on a thermal printer. And again, with the Raspberry Pi, people could be a talk by itself. And I, and I put all of my code on GitHub. If you want to learn more about my water bot, at at the at DEF CON in the biohacking village, I'm actually doing a more in-depth talk there. And more hacking! More hacking. A great online website is Hack the Box. Hack the Box, you actually have to hack your way in to get an account. It's a 
What it is, is it's a safe online hackable computer that lets you practice your hacking skills. Yeah. And a great thing to have is a basic toolkit. In your basic toolkit, you should have a box to keep all your stuff in, and especially kids should have a toolkit. Let them play around. And it sh you should have a box so you don't leave stuff everywhere and trip and fall, break your head, la la la. And what you should have in that box is Phillips and flat head screwdrivers, pliers, needle nose and regular pliers, measuring tape, hammer, flashlight, you never need, uh, you never know when you need to go into a deep and dark place, duct tape, and safety glasses, and remember, safety third! <laughs> and after you get used to that, you, you should uh, um, get mini screwdrivers, a soldering kit, like if you don't know how to solder, go learn, people, and a portable vise. You should always build a home lab, even if it's in the garage or in the basement, anywhere, in your bedroom, in the bathroom, though that be weird. A great way to set it up is get old computers that people are like, eh, I'm just gonna throw it away because I'm getting the new, this computer that's like, has all these gadget stuff. Take their old computers and set up as hacking targets. You could try to hack those old computers or try new operating systems. Like you're at home and say, oh, I want to try Kali Linux on my computer, but I like don't know how it's gonna like like be. So I'm like gonna try it on like like my old computer people. And have old networking gear. So you can capture packets and learn networking. If you want to be a better hacker, you need to know, learn networking. It's like a big thing. And you should have a 3D printer, a solder station, parts, 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 and great lighting. Because you don't want to be like, oh, it's so dark, but I have to hammer in this nail. Ah, oh, my finger! Ah, the pain! The torture! Continuing. Some takeaways. Remember, Scratch, great way to start off. Python, Raspberry Pi, The Forest Mims, Getting Started in Electronics, great book. Add a fruit, of course. Have a toolkit and build a home lab. And remember, Check for explosives. Why would you do that? <laughs> explosives are fun. Exactly. Especially in a hotel that's actually letting us be here. So you've started. Now what? Um, I'm Corbin Friswold. I go by Ranger Kose on Twitter. I'm 15 years old and I'm a beginner in the InfoSec community. Um, a lot of my interests range around computers, music, cryptology, mathematics, theoretical physics, penetration testing, system building, and going to cons such as HOPE. Uh, I'm here because I want to provide resources for beginners. I know that learning from the very beginning sucks <laughs> a lot. 
Uh, keeping momentum going after you've started is a very, very hard thing to do. Such, also, starting is one of the hardest things to do. And I also want to help. Uh, what do I do? I do software design and hacking. I do a lot of web design, some system administration, and I enjoy building computers and messing with hardware. Uh, who do I work for? Currently nobody. I did work for Novacore and Legion Gaming Community. I'll also work for anyone with money if you've got some offers. Uh, what fields are good for beginners? Web design is a very good field for getting a feel for more text-based languages when you're getting off of something like Scratch. Or uh, one, my school uses MIT App Inventor in their Intro to CSE class. And then the next class up from that is their APCSP class. And the first thing you learn in that class is how to program in HTML. And that's to switch you off of thinking without a syntax when using block-based languages. So WordPress is good for setting up a blog, but it's not good for learning a lot of HTML and CSS, more advanced things. Uh, JavaScript is also fun if you feel like dealing with it. <laughs> uh, I also do system administration. A lot of it is basic. It's a very, very good way to learn the ins and outs of networks and how TCP IP works, how to mess with firewalls, routers, etc. <clears throat> Uh, a lot of it involves patching systems, a lot of maintenance. It also requires setting up networks and making sure people don't get viruses. <laughs> Breaking things. Breaking things is a very, very good way to get a start in, ha in hacking. Uh, breaking networks is very fun, as well as other systems, like just ripping apart your computer to find out what's inside it. That was fun. And you can also break people doing something such as social engineering. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of good habits you can and probably should build if you're trying to get further in the field. So the most important one that I've realized is setting realis yeah, realistic goals. Something like learning how to do TCP IP in a month or two, the basics of Python in three or four weeks. Uh, realistic goals really help you know what your capabilities are and if you learn faster than you expected to then you can just set back your goal a little bit and move further. Uh, setting time apart in a schedule is also a very important thing for learning more. That's part of the realistic goals part so set apart two hours a day to study this thing for whatever certification you want to get and it helps a lot. Uh, creating good notes is also very good. So Bia's father's company hands out notebooks to their employees. A lot of companies really like to encourage note taking and it's a very good thing. It's not childish, it's not a high school thing. Always take notes. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. So when I was 10 years old, I attended B-Sides for I think the third time after being dragged there by my father. And I don't know if any of you know Dr. Russ, but he is a big SDR nerd. And I said, oh, that looks cool. And I sat him down for about four hours and forced him to teach me SDR. <laughs> um, also, anyone who does not want to answer your questions or refuses to answer your questions, you probably don't want their answers. Just some good advice for the future. <laughs> uh, attend talks and talk to a lot of people. So talks are great places to learn. Also take notes at these. Uh, uh, a very good way to learn more is interact with the person that does the talk afterwards by asking questions. So we're probably gonna have 15 to 20 minutes for questions that anybody wants after this. Uh, some other good notes are a lot of good learning resources online. I'll put these links online somewhere or I'll give them to Radio Statler later. Uh, Google a lot of things. Google is the savior of every hacker ever. It's great. <laughs> Local cons and meetups are great as well, as Bia mentioned. 
Uh, other bigger cons, so kid tracks, if you're trying to get a very young kid into hacking, like a seven year old, I run Spawn Camp at B-Sides Delaware and I try to make it as interesting and fun and informational as possible for kids who are coming in here. Especially the kids who are like, well this is a thing that you do dad, I don't want to do this. <laughs> uh, attend big talks, so talks such as those at something like DerbyCon, they usually have a lot of high informational value. And if you can't attend them, look them up online. Also, do talks. It's terrifying, but it is so much fun. Uh, ways to test your knowledge. I'll, finding quite a few of them are hard for different fields, but if you're into cryptology or basic encryption, Pi uh, Pico CTF is a very, very good one for beginners. Uh, going to cons and finding something as the pros versus Joes that I participated in last year at B-Sides, which is a full-on insane hacking attempt. So you've got, uh, you've got pros on the blue team and red team, and then you've got noobs underneath them who listen to the pros, and the blue team and red team go against each other. And it's all based in one room, and it's, in, it's really cool. There's also the wireless CTF, which is SDR, which is what Russ was teaching me. I never got much into it, but it's also a very, very fun field to work with. Uh, what can the veterans here do to help a lot of people like me who are trying to get into the fields? You can be open, so when someone walks up and asks you a question, don't just kind of shrug them off and say, oh, you're a kid. Instead, be like, you're a kid who wants to know something. I should tell you this. Uh, teach people. Offer to teach people or run, uh, I think they have villages upstairs teaching soldering if I'm correct. Uh, create resources and post about resources. Resources are very, very good to find, but finding them is the hard part. So post about them and create a lot of them. Also, if the person's like seven years old, <laughs> be a... I am 11 <laughs> Simplify things for her. <laughs> that is the end. Bea has requested that I give you kittens and to not forget Trevor, ever. <laughs> uh, many thanks. Any questions? Great job. Um, I'm a teacher and director of technology. Let's assume that there were a school that wasn't afraid of kids like you. Um, <laughs> I think what, that's impossible. Come out to LA sometime. But um, what kinds of programs should we as educators build to support students like you? Uh, I enjoy the fact that a school, like I just moved recently, so my new school has a full on STEM program and they allowed me to design their new maker space for them because they knew that I had experience in the field. They didn't treat me just like some kid. They knew that I had experience, so they allowed me to help them. And now they've got multiple laser cutters and CNC mills and stuff. Yeah. Oh, Don't talk about the programming club. Oh, yeah. Okay, hello, uh, hello, okay. It's me again, yes. And at my school, well, when I still went to school, now I'm home, now I'm homeschooled, so, yeah. And my dad um, saw the school, and in, um, in computer class, we were lear learning how to make mazes, mazes in Excel, like, like really people, like really. So my dad decided, we need to help these people. So he designed the coding club where we all learned Python, was it dad? Yeah, it was Python. And we got kits from Adafruit and dad just taught us like every Wednesday. And it was so cool. We, um, we made this game where ninjas through, th um, nin uh, a ninja through throwing stars at bugs protecting the computer. It was fun, and my friend Kara did something adorable. She, she changed it to a guinea pig throwing sunflower seeds at um, kittens, protecting cotton candy. It was adorable, yeah. So it's great, like, 
even um, maybe at your kids' schools, you could even start your own coding club. You know, start with something like Python or something, you know, if they don't have a good computer program or one at all. Yeah, the biggest part of that is finding more of a safe haven for your child to work with and learn more things. And as a parent, you should get involved too. Come into the school and say, start this club, do this thing. It's a good idea. <laughs> Next question. Hi, so first I want to thank you guys, you're amazing. Um, so successes are really cool, but is there any failure in particular that you learned a lot from that you want to share? Speak first, I need to think. No, I've had a I lot of failure. First fingers, <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh huh. So, you guys remember the LED solar dollhouse, right? Yeah, you remember that. I was soldering, I was in first grade. I didn't see that the soldering iron was plugged into the outlet. And even Dad, when he unplugged it, I thought it just poof not hot anymore, so I picked it up like a pencil. I got burned, ooh, it stung. So I'm saying, watch your kids, make sure they're <laughs> safe, make sure they're safe, and if you're ever like sitting at the computer talking, make sure, look at them and say, hey, you listening, are you awake, or are you like sleeping with your eyes open right now? <laughs> And are you okay? Because I see that you're burning yourself, so. <laughs> okay, say failure. My, uh, my biggest story of failure might have been deleting an entire server on accident. <laughs> <laughs> so you're so, a sysadmin. <laughs> <laughs> I was working for Novacore, and they, they, uh, they used Debian on all of their servers, and they asked me to update it. And some of Debian's the way it uses paths and stuff are confusing. And I ended up deleting about half of our database. <laughs> they weren't happy. <laughs> Did they fire you? No, surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. Next. Uh, so first of all, uh, thank you for throwing this uh, panel. I hope it's uh, very enlightening for the people here. I, I, I have a question, but I also just want to make a comment. If anyone here is interested in actually learning soldering, uh, if you go to the up the escalators in the mezzanine and you take a left, there's a whole hardware hacking village with people who would love to help you out, including this awesome, crazy, rainbow-haired guy named Mitch Altman. Uh, he taught me how to solder, and he can, if you can teach someone as dumb as me to solder, Anyone else can learn how to solder. Uh, my question is for both of you: uh, What exciting uh, new project would you are you attempting now to tackle uh, next after uh, all of your achievements that you've listed here? So first, I'd like to interject and say it's rainbow hair, not purple hair. So it's clearly not a hacker, <laughs> based on Bia's talk. Here, talk first. Prejudice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. What I'm working on, I'm actually working with my friends, Anna and Abby, on a weather balloon project. It's really cool. We're gonna send up a weather balloon, and it, and it has um, these things that, um, in the different you know, stratosphere and toposphere and lala sphere and whatever <laughs> spheres there are, we take a sample of air from each one, and then I'm gonna work with Sebastian, you remember from my talk, we're gonna work with Sebastian and we're gonna see what different bacterias grow in that air and where they came from and why. You know, so we're working with bacteria. Your turn, what projects are you working on? Let's see. Uh, I'm working on two, no, three main projects right now. So the first one is I'm, uh, I'm working on calculus and a bunch of other fun computer things with advanced mathematics with a friend of mine who graduated from MIT a few years ago, which is you should really get involved with veterans and other people in the field. That's a very good thing to remember. Uh, I'm also currently working on my blog as well, which I'll post on my Twitter if people want it. I'm just teaching myself more about Python and learning more about competition programming and stuff because that's what the programming club I run at my school mainly does is we will go to competitions and we just mass hack things. And the other one is I'm attempting to design with a Raspberry Pi a smart mirror, which is uh, it's a two-way mirror 
where you have a screen on one side of it and it shines through, but it's still a mirror on this side. Mm -hmm. And you get a display and everything and you can hook Alexa up to it, you can hook all sorts of IoT things up to it, and then I'm gonna hack it. <laughs> uh, also, just quick to note, uh, when you two finally take over the world, please remember all of us as the little people and have mercy on us. No, 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 no. <laughs> Vending machines are gonna take over the world, don't worry. Yeah. Just keep all your quarters in a jar. <laughs> Hey, how are you doing? I just want to let you know, great talk, uh, fantastic job. So, simple question for the both of you, and are you both thinking about this college thing? Because from an initial glance and from your talk, I'm, not, I'm debating whether it's actually worth the money for you, because you have the <laughs> skills, you have the tinkering skills, like, have you even thought about it? Like, I, I don't know. Like, Should I go first? I'm not sure about her, but I thought about college a lot, uh, my dream school is MIT because of the culture there. That's where hacking started with Peter Sampson and the PDP-11. Like, it all started there. And I want to get into that culture and meet a lot of people through that. Also, as I said, one of my passions is physics, and that's got a great undergrad physics program. So I want to go to MIT. And my father's going to hate me choice. for it because of the tuition, but <laughs> yep. it's going to be great if I can get in. Okay, I don't have a college in mind. I just don't, uh, I don't really know where I, I should go or anything, but I want to become a pen tester. I badly want to become a pen tester. It, it sounds like so much fun, and I'm actually doing training classes, and I'm going to try to get my, what is it called again, Dad? OSCP. OSCP, and I'm actually working on that now, so, yeah, I hope I can get it. <laughs> I have a book on that if you want to buy it. Oh, yeah, I want to buy the book. I can't see if there's another person. Yeah, it's too bright. there is one. <laughs> hey guys, you are just amazing. Guy, I like what you can do, what you have achieved. But my question is, how did it happen? You know, most of the children nowadays, they look into tablets, smartphones, play Roblox, Minecraft. They are not interested in anything, anything at all. When they have time, they watch the smartphone. What was the impulse for you to start being hackers? You know, to learn all of this, to achieve. Okay, so a great way is don't do something your kid doesn't like or something new. Start off with something they do like. If they like Roblox, make them program their own game kind of like Roblox or make them program a game that they can actually play. Like with Minecraft, if they're really into Minecraft, like I showed you the Raspberry Pi and then the book of programming in Minecraft, because I'm pretty sure they'd like it if a house just appeared after three lines of code. Like, really. And that book is actually available at No Starch Press upstairs. Sound and like you're being sponsored. And <laughs> if you How much are they paying you? Can I get in on this? And, <laughs> and if you have a um, girl that's like a girly girl, not really like into hacking or anything, they're like, oh, I like my nails or something like that. You know what you could do? You could always try making electronic clothing like this headband or the um, the gemma. You know, like all different electronic clothing, because I'm pretty sure, like in the newest Maker magazine um, from Adafruit, you know, no, the Maker magazine, sorry, the Maker magazine, they, uh, I actually looked through it last night, and I actually saw that they have, um, if they're really into nails, they have um, light up nail things that you can actually program and stuff. So, like, do what your kid likes and make it into something you can teach them. Uh, I, I'd like to add, do you remember building the pony pie at DC 610? Oh, yeah! We took uh, a Pinkie Pie plushie from My Little Pony and stuck electronics into it and turned it into a CTF. <laughs> That's a very good way to get your daughter into hacking. Unless she doesn't want to see you cutting over her, uh, open her beloved Pinkie Pie plushie. <laughs> uh, another thing, well, how I got into the field mainly, is my father brought me to B-Sides when I was six, seven years old, and introduced me to a lot of people and let me socialize and find out what about the field I like and just run around and be me. And so running around and doing all these things, I got to meet Russ and I got to experiment with SDR and I got to find out, eh, I don't like that so much. I got to go to the Pros vs. Joe CTF and do that and found out, eh, I like it, but it's not for me. Uh, and then I got to do actual programming, and I'm like, that's for me. Just let your kid explore and find what they want. And if 
remember, if they don't like hacking in computers, that's okay. Maybe they want to go into interior design someday. And another thing is, especially with little kids, like they're going to be bored like, oh, two words appeared on the computer after I typed this in. <sighs> I'm going to sleep. Hello World was like the thing for 80s kids, okay? 80s kids, people, not now. <laughs> I'd all say you want to do is play Roblox on your phone. I don't even like Roblox, so <laughs> shut it. Okay, <laughs> so... Uh, um, a great way, especially with little kids, is a lot of little kids like like stuffed animals and stuff. Even me, I even like them still. And a great way is LEDs. Like they blink, they light up, and noises and sounds and moving parts yes, and robots. Yes, the Pinkie Pie's butt. <laughs> it's called a hiney. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so start off with the LEDs and keep working with LEDs. People uh, and kids especially like things that actually do things like LEDs and a lot of things that actually move and talk and speak. Robots is a great way to start off. People love robots. Yeah, a good Robux kit is the, uh, the Lego, I think they're on EV3 now. That's how I started when I was like five years old, I found it in my father's bedroom, took out the kit, and started building things. You were actually five years old? Mm. <laughs> this isn't every temptation to put up a middle finger at you, <laughs> but your father will hit me. <laughs> Are there any more questions? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you folks have already figured out that, you know, learning and, and doing things is just its own reward. That's, that's all there is to it. But like half of this conference is also about yeah, causes, right? About doing things for organizations, you know, causes and stuff. Hackers uh, for charity. Exactly. Uh, well, that and, and also, you know, real world actors and stuff like that. Have you started, the, what do you, where, where are you on, on that part? Or like, this is now what you do with these powers. Or has that really come up yet? Because I gotta admit, there's plenty to do that doesn't have anything to do with causes. I haven't personally gotten involved with any charity stuff yet because, well, at B-Sides I did some stuff for Hackers for Charity, but I haven't gotten a chance to get fully involved into it yet and start making a difference with it. My main focus is learning the things and having fun with them right now, and then when I'm old enough to start my own charity, I might start a charity. It just depends. Yeah, and we can run it together and call it Bia and some other guy. <laughs> Can I hit her yet? Uh, yeah, give <laughs> hey, I'm gonna step on it. I have a question for each of you. Bia, what's your favorite thing on Hack the Box? Well, I basically just got started, and I actually just got in pretty much. But then after, like, yay, I started. Oh no, now I have to do like 20 million talks. These for DEF CONS, these for HOPE, this for this. So like, it's pretty hard to find time to actually do stuff after you're doing so many talks. Like I'm doing a packet capturing talk and my water bot talk and then this talk and everything, you know? So like, I'm really gonna s get started with Hack the Box and I'm really gonna start doing a lot of stuff with it but I haven't had a chance because I'm pretty busy, you know? With the whole homeschooling and then this and then it's almost Hacker Week and then it's Hacker Summer Camp and then <laughs> It's gonna be really funny when she hits high school and tries to take AP classes. You'll have no time. <laughs> I feel this feel. Um, and for you, did the schematics for the Pony Pie ever get released anywhere? Uh, I know it was Eric. <laughs> it was Eric and Nate, I think, who first designed it. It's based off, so at DerbyCon, Nate and my father, uh, Gangriff and Xenophage, they built, uh, for the Hack My Derby contest, they built attack derbies where they released the code publicly and it ran on Docker and it was a CTF hat that would attack other hats around it. Really cool concept and I really like the design. They also did ones that it would walk around and you would hack the hat itself and you would be able to put things on a display that's on the side of the hat. I'm not sure if they ever made it safe for work, <laughs> but so what they essentially did, I'm not sure if that code's on GitHub either still, but if I can find it, I'll put it on my blog as well. 
uh, what they did was they just put the CTF hat inside the pony. Uh, maker.godshell.com And I have a website too, bsilove.com, right? Wow, you have your own domain, fancy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Any other questions? We can't really see because of the lights. Any other? <laughs> going once, going twice, and thank you! You would make so a terrible auctioneer. <laughs>